continuing. How could we not continue at this point? Johnny Tremaine by Esther Forbes, illustrated by Lynn Ward, and published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. We are so far into the book. Okay, we just finished. We're chapter 12, section 3. Johnny has been looking for Rab. Rab went off to fight at Lexington and has been asking. He's been asking around, like, where are all the Silsby's? Uh, he does run into Dr. Warren, and Dr. Warren tells him that Rab was there in the beginning and that he stood his ground. So the British came up and said, you disperse, you know, disperse ye rebels. And, uh, and he didn't. He stood his ground with the men around him, and he was shot. And so we don't know what happened to him, but he was taken to a nearby home. He was wounded in that first volley. He got it pretty bad. And Dr. Warren tells Johnny, like, you have to be tough. Rab played a man's part. Look that you do the same. And Johnny's like <laughs> really connected with Rab, okay? And so this is going to be this is going to be tough for him to see that Rab is injured. Section four. Dr. Warren whistled to his mare who followed him like a dog. Johnny entered the tavern on Warren's heels and to their right was the tap room full and overflow overfull. Johnny half heard the same conversation going on here that he had listened to when he had stopped to buy food at that other tavern. Had they all been heroes or did they just talk and do nothing? Rab never had said much but he had done all a man might. A boy, the boy had been carried to a back chamber on the second floor. He was not in bed, but sitting up in an armchair, propped with pillows. A woman of the inn had been sitting with him, quietly knitting. She got up when the doctor and Johnny entered the room and left without speaking. Johnny had been fearful that Rab would be suffering, crying out, struggling like other wounded men he had seen, afraid that with death so close, something of that aloof dignity he had always had would be shattered. He had lived with Rab a year and a half, and yet he had never really known him, not known him inside out as, say, he had known the hated dove. But half sitting as he was, Rab did not seem at first very different from always. His face was white, but not drawn. The eyes, very dark and wide. Rab smiled. You got out all right? Yes. How's Boston? The British are furious that we licked them so. <laughs> there was a sudden trickle of blood at one corner of his mouth. Rab wiped it away. In these few hours, his hands had grown white, weak, thin. And as he turned his face, the afternoon light fell across it. Johnny saw the flesh seemed translucent. There were lavender circles about the eyes. So he's lost blood, okay? You, you look very pale when you've lost blood. I've had a lot of time to think, said Rab at last just lying here. Do you remember that market woman who lost her pig? Its name was Myra, and it could do tricks. Then I, I looked up, and you were standing there, looking like a robber boy with your hand in your pocket. I remember. Rab lay with his eyes shut for a little while, remembering other things, things perhaps Johnny did not share. Back into his childhood in Lexington, the important and unimportant things jumbled together. A favorite dog, the death of his father, the first day he went to school, and the first day he drilled with the Minutemen. He moved a little restlessly and said, Colonel Nesbitt, remember? And he told me, go buy a pop gun, boy. Well, a pop gun would have done me just as well in the end. This idea fretted him a little. Dr. Warren wet a cloth in a basin of water and wiped his bloody mouth. There's my musket over there. It's better now than any they have. 
I was always kind of bothered to think I might have to stand up to them without a good gun in my hands. But I had it all right. He was thanking Johnny for getting it for him. But I never did get to fire it. They shot first. The trickle of blood became a stream. Dr. Warren was bending over him, holding his shoulders. Johnny walked disconsolately about the chamber. He looked out the window. He picked up a pewter candlestick and examined the maker's mark. He heard Warren saying, Steady, boy. And after a moment, Is it better so? It is better so, Rab whispered. But the next moment, he said, quite naturally, Johnny... Johnny went to him, sat on the floor beside his chair, and put his hands over Rab's thin ones. Yes, Rab. You can have that musket. <laughs> I sort of like to think of its going on. I've put a better stock on it, changed the angle of the steel. Look at that flint. The one it had was too smooth. I've napped it. I'll take good care of it. And there's another thing you can do for me. Anything. Go to Silsby's Cove. See if the women have come back yet from hiding. Grandsire will be about. He said he wouldn't go off hiding. He'd sit it out in his chair. I'll go. Then Rab began to smile. Everything he had never put in words was in that smile. But as he was leaving the room, Johnny saw that once more Dr. Warren was bending over him. He heard him say, How is that? Is it better? Yes, it is better so. Short video, but this is the end of this video. So come back and find out what happens at the end.